with the uh, North Central States Region of Council Carpenters. I represent the Madison Training Center, which would be our Southern Training Center. Uh, we've got two other training centers that are affiliated with North Central States. Uh, we have one in, in up north in Wausau, and we've got another one in Pecan, which is our Midwest. We also do have another training center in Wisconsin, it's in Pewaukee. Uh, they're affiliated with uh, our Chicago Council. So we do have four of them, four of them in the state. Uh, we're not the only, only entity here. Um, we work underneath the UBC United Brotherhood Carpenters. Our international training center is in, in Las Vegas, Nevada. There are actually six different areas that we cover as carpenters. Residential carpentry is one of them. First thing I have on here is a residential carpenter. Like you said, we have framers, rubbers, uh, interior finishes, doors, windows. Underneath the, the main area of residential, you've got all these different areas. Um, and you've got people that are in each area that are a little more specialized. Like you have a group that does framing all the time. They get really good at framing. You guys that do the doors and windows. Once the guys and framers get done, the guys with the doors and windows come in. So they get specialized in those areas. Uh, the next area that we have, uh, commercial carpentry. Now, typically a commercial carpenter, when you see a Madison, when you see the power cranes, you see uh, a lot of big construction. We're, we're building schools and churches, hospitals. Um, we have the infrastructure, we're building airports, malls. Uh, Walt came from a background, he built, he built bridges. All the stuff that we see kind of behind the scenes, we don't realize that that's under the guys of the, under the carpenters. And under that section, we've also got, we've got layout, we've got form construction, we've got um, finished carpenters, and we've got millwork. We've got people that work in shops that are, that are doing millwork. They're building the cabinets that the carpenters are installing. These are all underneath our commercial commercial carpentry. Um, also under the carpenters, the next path that we have, uh, floor layers, floor covers. And under floor covers, we've got carpets, we've got laminates and vinyl, <clears throat> we've got wood, and we've got sports service and surfaces. Um, you guys all come from a school school background. Carpenters likely put your, your um, gymnasium floors in. It's all built by, by carpenters. So that's that's under the under the realm of the, the floor covers. Uh, another area that we cover, and this one's this one's really booming, uh, is interior systems, steel studs, drywall. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of finished systems, uh, acoustical ceilings. Those are done by your carpenters. Um, so a lot of people think, well, you know, carpenters are real physical. You have to be you have to be a big tough guy to do it. Um, a lot, we have some women in the, in the acoustical ceilings. We have women that are doing form work, construction, and they're, uh, and they're succeeding. We're trying to get, get more women into the trades. The ones that are there, uh, they just recently had a Sisters of the Brotherhood, a uh, group of, of 460 women that got together and they're trying to get more women into the trades. It's not, it's not simply a man's, a man's trade. Uh, and, there, and there are a lot of things that women can do. Um, the next thing that we have are mill rights. Anybody mill rights actually go in. Uh, they can be in a paper mill. They can be in uh, power plants. Any, any t uh, type of a manufacturing environment. But uh, what they do is they go in, they set up, they align, they repair all the big machinery, conveyors. People ask, well, how, why would they be? There's no hammer. There's no nails. There's Nothing with a millwright that really resembles carpentry. Back in back in the Middle Ages, way back when, the the name millwright actually came from shutdowns of plants. These guys would come in and they'd make the mill right. They'd make everything that was that was wrong on these shutdowns. They'd come in and they'd make it right. Uh, the reason that we're covered under the carpenters is the gears. Everything in the, in, in the past was all made out of wood. So it took fine, intricate you know, detail for them to make those gears to make that plant work. So that's why we're under um, the millwrights are still historically underneath the, the carpenter's shield. 
Uh, no right to actually do compressors, pumps, conveyors, monorails, extruders, uh, turbines, and mining equipment. Uh, you use some, some things about mining nowadays, and they actually align all the machinery for mining. They can have conveyor systems that run multiple miles, and everything's all aligned. It's all done by cartridges. And it's usually very heavy equipment. So they're de dealing with rigging, uh, they're dealing with a lot of overhead work, but it's very heavy equipment and it's usually very fine tolerances. Um, when, they, when they have a shutdown and they go in, they have to change a turbine. They have to have that close, to that close tolerance because if there's any wobble in that, in that shaft, it's going to wear that machinery out that much quicker. So they've got close tolerances that they have to follow. But what, what they do is they set, they set, um, they hold back the earth for excavations. If they're making a big excavation, They'll pound these piles down to hold back the excavation. Um, the foundations for bridges. Uh, in Madison, there's, there's really not a lot of bedrock. So they'll actually pound piles to get down to, to sturdy ground or bedrock for a foundation for some of our, um, our hotels and, and bigger buildings. And uh, not historically here, but on the East Coast, they build a lot of docks, a lot of wharfs. So we'll have have all that into uh, under the under the pile drivers. There's really two ways to do it. First way is life experience. You can gain experience uh, through a contractor on your own, and then you can come and you can take a test. It's an equivalency test. It's uh, actually a journeyman's test. Uh, if you pass a journeyman's test, then you can. You you can go to a contractor and you can be in the union. Um, the other way, and, and why we're here today, is to join an apprenticeship. An apprenticeship is more or less you're learning a business or trade, someone who's in the process of becoming skilled in a specific job or trade. So they, they go in thinking, you know, you know, I'd like to be a floor cover, I'd like to get into you know, commercial carpentry. So they, they can pick, but there is that, that option too that they can, they can go from one area to another. Um, next question a lot of people ask is, do you need experience? Um, historically, they were, they, they had gotten experience in the, in the trade somewhere somewhere down the road, they, they might not have had extensive experience, but they did have some experience. Uh, apprentice would come in, they take the test, take the apprenticeship test, and then they would get hired by a contractor, and then the contractor and, and the training center would, would hone their skills. Um, you really don't need experience. That's why we're um, our, our average age is coming down for our, for our apprentices. The historical age was 26, 27 years old. Uh, what happened is people get out of high school, some of them went to college, some of them really didn't know where they wanted to go, so they found around for a few years. And then somewhere along the line, they find out about the trades. And then they'll come into the trades, they'll be 26, 27. It's when they start getting serious, they're going to start raising a family, they're going to start looking for a, for a good wage, looking for something for their future. Um, and that age was 26 to 27 years old. Uh, the last group that I had come through safety week, our average age, to take out one guy that was 40 and another guy that was 35, our average age is getting down to like 23, 24 age, age group in this last group. Uh, and I tell the guys in the field, it's gonna get younger. We're, we're trying to get you know, kids coming right from high school. Get them into the trades because you know it is it is an option, and a lot of people really don't know. Sometimes they say we're the best kept secret that there is because a lot of people don't know about the carpenters. Qualifications are you must be at least 18 years of age. You have to have a high school diploma or equivalent, and this is a big one. Must pass the pass the mathematics aptitude test. Um, if you look in that in that pamphlet, we actually give you the formulas, we give you the studies, 
what they have to know as far as passing the test. But typically, you know, they'll, if they pass the math test, then what we'll do in the process, we'll give them a list of contractors. They'll go and they'll find their first contractor. And once they find their first contractor, then they're then they're under the business side. We'll have them in the in the um, in the union. And if times get slow, they get laid off from one contractor. Then the business reps will find you know, find another. They'll know who's going to who's looking for people they can they can employ. Them. So um, that's good a good benefit to have for a hired mom. Um, must be physically able to perform the job. As I said earlier, there's a lot of areas where you don't have to be carrying around, you know, studs all day long. You don't have to do the formal um, acoustic ceilings, uh, steel studs. Uh, there's a lot of layout jobs. Uh, and there's support jobs that aren't covered by the carpenters also. There's, um, you could be a project manager. You could be a superintendent, a foreman. Uh, there are a lot of different aspects uh, that are affiliated with the carpenters with the trade. Uh, one of the big things, you must have a valid driver's license or dependable transportation. Uh, typically what they'll do is if you, if you have a problem, if you don't have your driver's license, they'll just ask that you, you have some means to get, get to training and get to your job. Apprenticeship is four years. Uh, we have two semesters each year, two weeks in each semester. Uh, it's a total of 14 weeks of training. Each unit is going to be 40 hours, and there's 14 units, so that comes up to be 540 hours of, of actual class class school work. I believe it's 540. 560. Five, 560 hours of of training over over that four year period. So two weeks two weeks each semester. Okay, the, the period of time that we have that we have uh, with the apprenticeship, you have to work five thousand eight hundred and forty hours out in the field. That's the, the current time. That's seven hundred and thirty hours every six months. We start at a certain rate, and every every six months we get a five percent, a five percent raise. Next question is, especially from the kids coming out of school, they're saying, "Show me the money. What what am I what am I going to make?" If you look at uh, the carpenters, I'll just cover the carpenters and floor covers. Our current rate we start at nineteen sixty three and all. A lot better than McDonald's. A lot better than, than a lot, a lot of entry level jobs. Going. A lot of the kids go and work at. If they're not going to college, they'll go and work at Home Depot, Menards, and they're making eight, ten dollars a month. Um, and you come in with no experience whatsoever, then you make nineteen sixty three and all. And then if you look every every six months, you work seven hundred thirty hours in that six month period. Their next pay period, they're going to make twenty one twenty seven. Go all the way through the process until they get up to 3272. That's our current journey rate. A good thing about being in the apprenticeship is after your first 500 hours, they get all the same benefits. To